Hello and welcome to Golden Droplets episode number 37. My name is Ricardo Valls. I am the principal and founder of Valls Geo Consultant. And in today's episode, we're going to be talking about where to find your next deposit. In a previous episode, I talked about how to find cheaply your next deposit. And in this episode, we will be discussing options that you may have to find your next deposit. So, once again, Golden Droplets, episode number 37. Enjoy! So, where do we find our next deposit? For this, we're gonna need to think outside the box. For those who don't know me, my name is Ricardo Valls. I graduated from Engri, Moscow in 1983. I'm a PGO in Ontario and a qualified person with over 37 years of international experience. I'm also the author of several books on geology, quality assurance, quality control, and artificial intelligence and machine learning. If you want to obtain a copy of this presentation, drop me an email at palsvg at gmail.com. And to start, several weeks ago, I presented a golden droplet about how to discover your next deposit using linear meta-analysis. And you can see the link here to that presentation. Today, we're gonna be talking about where we can find our next deposit. And for that, I strongly recommend you this book, The Geological Methods in Mineral Explorations and Mining from Rogers Marjorie Banks. This is a link to, to where you can find this book. And it's an excellent and modern book about exploration. And many of the ideas that I'm going to be discussing here, I took it from this book. So you probably have heard a lot about all the deposits have already been found. There is nothing to see here. Move along, people. There have been recent discoveries. Some of the factors responsible for recent discoveries are, first of all, people that search in unexplored areas like jungles or under sea or in the middle of the desert. Other people uh, investigated weak anomalies or atypical mineral indicators that were previously ignored by the geologists. And in the specific case of the weak anomalies, I'm talking specifically about geochemistry, remember that you can have a weak anomaly because there is no goal or because the goal is very deep. So in geochemistry, it's very difficult to estimate the depth from where the signal is coming. And sometimes a new paper will come up with a new mineralogical description of the deposit and that will give you an indication of another mineral indicator that you could use to do your discoveries. An easy way of recent discovery is just expansion of known deposit and you all know the saying that the best place to look for a mine is next to a mine and companies will drill around their deposit in the hope to find some blind or cover or deposit near the mine. A new geological model, geologists come in with a new idea, a new interpretation of the existing data and that will generate the possibility of discovering a new deposit. And finally, chance is always there. You probably all heard the story of the student that was taking some samples from a limestone and he called the lab and said, well, I have some samples here. What kind of analysis I can do? 
and he didn't even specify that there were limestones so the lab told them well you can do multi-element analysis fire assay so he ordered those assay when the results came back well all and behold there was gold and that's how the carling type of deposit was discovered there is also the story of the dentist in california was driving and he lost control of his car he came out to it to explore and he saw oil seeping out from the rocks so chance is always a factor in discoveries of the past now what are your opportunities for new discoveries well number one opportunity is the access to new information being your own or public and places like Canada, Mexico, many countries in Europe, England, they have geological surveys with a wealth of information that are available for free or at a very low cost, like in Mexico. You can go to any state in Mexico and buy all the geological map, your chemical data, your physical data, satellite imagery, everything. And with that information, you can study it and get in a new idea for a new discovery. A discovery in a nearby area. I remember I was working in San Juan, Argentina, in the Cordillera, very close to Chile. And by the time I was working there in Chile, on the other side of the mountains, they were making a big discovery, the Valedero deposit. And it was in the same area that I was, so I was in the right place at that time. A very important point is to get more experience by visiting other deposits. And of course, it would be great if we could all fly around, not even thinking about COVID, but having the money to fly around to different deposits and to see all the thing. But there is an alternative. Many countries have these big mining conventions, like in Canada, the best one is the PDAC, PDAC, Prospective Development Association of Canada. And in this conference, which they have a section called the Core Shack, where every company will bring their core and, you know, the best core for all different types of deposit. This is a wonderful and unique opportunity where you can just sit in one place, visit 15, 20 deposits of all the world and get the experience and get the eye for this type of mineralization and then you can come back to your deposit and look it with new eyes new technologies an mmi was discovered it had a great impact especially in australia where the australian regolite is very useful more recently we have enzyme leach which for me is one of the best geochemical methods available and the geophysics are constantly improving in their way of doing exploration besides that you also have some technologies that are considered more academic like um, isotopic analysis or fluid inclusions and many others and it's our job to bring those academic technology into the field because they can really make the difference they can open new opportunities for discovery and finally we have the political and or economical changes and it works both ways sometimes there was a country that was not open to mining and then they change the government and then the new president or prime minister say oh yes i welcome the mining investors happen for example in ecuador there are places that they always have been pro-mining like armenia or guatemala which in their constitution is said that they want to develop mining but you also have the reverse sometimes you were in a country and then they change the president or even the local government like there is a situation at this moment in one of the provinces of Argentina, Mendoza, where they cannot develop mining. The, the local government said, no, they are against developing any kind of mining in that region, so you cannot work there. 
On the other hand, if India, which is the number one consumer of gold, announced several years ago that they would put a cap on the amount of gold that they would buy, the price of gold went down. And then China said that they want to buy more copper and the price of copper went up. So you need to be aware of all the political and or economical changes and work with that. Now, you really need to be a critic. In order to get this new opportunity, you need to be a critic. So one of the things you will hear is, oh, this area is not prospective because it's covered by rocks X. And I had, I had this personal experience. I was working for a company in Quebec and half of the territory was covered by alluvial sands, pristine, white, clean alluvial sands. And of course, nobody's wasting their time working on that. But the company w uh, bought uh, the satellite imagery for the whole area. And when I did interpretation of these images, I found that from below the sun, I was getting a very interesting signal for a porphyritic type of deposit. Now, the local geologists were completely against that. They said, oh, we have walked this thing. There is nothing there. These are just alluvial marine sands. There is nothing there. But I was fortunate enough that the president of the company was more open-minded. And they were doing aerial geophysical survey at the area. And they expanded into the sand. And they got the most beautiful geophysical signal of a porphyritic deposit coming from below those sands. So, no, you don't take the area is not prospective as an answer. Well, number two, the area has been explored to the Jinjiang. Well, that may be, but that doesn't mean that there are not other opportunities. Sometimes the work that have been done have not been correct. Remember that many companies, they have like a, a plan. We do mapping, then geochemistry, then geophysics, then we do trenching, then we do drilling. And they apply that plan to no matter what. And there are deposits that will not respond to geophysics or will not respond to geochemistry. So you need to check, even in areas that have been explore very in detail. The area is fully covered by licenses. Well, this is, this is true. There are places where you cannot find a, like a, one square centimeters of free space. If you go, for example, to Dominican Republic, the whole island is covered with licenses. But that doesn't mean that there are no opportunities here. First of all, if you have an area and for whatever reason you really want to explore that, maybe you have additional information or a new idea, a new geological model, etc. Well, you can always talk to the owner of the license and see you can buy the license from them or do a joint venture, etc. Especially in third world countries, most of the people that own licenses, they own this license for a speculative purposes. They are not going to do any work there. They are just waiting for the opportunity like this one that somebody will come and say, well, I want your area. There is also in places like Chile, in Chile, you can have a license. Okay. And um, if I come and I want to apply on top of your license and you have not paid for the land, you have not done any work for many years the ministry will contact the person, the owner of the license, and say, well, you haven't done any work here. You haven't paid your, your license. Will you pay? If not, I'm going to give this license to this other guy that is going to pay. There is also the possibility of uh, applying to an area that is covered by a license, but for another metal. For example, let's say that somebody has a license for limestone and you apply for the same area for possible carlic type of deposit. That is 
uh, admissible in most jurisdictions in the world. Then there is a, a special case that I have only seen in Colombia is the what is called the horizontal licenses that you can apply to the same area but at different elevations, which is a nightmare because at the end you're going to need to consolidate all these licenses into one. So you go back to point number one, talk directly to the owner of the license. Well, we don't have a good geological model that works in this area. That's another thing that you will hear. Well, first of all, sometimes the geology was misunderstood. And I have a perfect example of this thing. There are places where, for many reasons, most of the regional geology was done on the basis of interpretation of satellite imagery of aerial photos. And there is a place there that there was a river and they have mapped an area as alluvial conglomerate associated to the river. And when we visited the area, we found out that it was not an alluvial conglomerate. It was an hydrothermal explosive breccia with copper mineralization on surface. So just by checking the geology, we could find this new deposit. Now, the last point is the area is protected, and this is a difficult one. And to tell you the truth, if the area is protected and you have other places where you can go and work, go to those other places, because working in protective area is always a nightmare. It's very difficult. But if you really like your area, I mean, there is a huge potential, then first you need to determine what is the level of protection that you have. Even environmental have level, different level. If they declare the area a park, then there is nothing to do there. But if they just want to prevent you to, to contaminate the basin, the hydrographical basin, there is like a buffer zone of 15 to 30 meters on both sides of the river that you just protect that area and you can work on other places. And there are intermediate levels where you can do your exploration, but you need to do a lot of work to prevent environmental impact. With respect to the Aboriginal or local owners, it's not only a good professional practice, but it's a decent thing to do is to discuss with them and see if there are ways to find a win-win situation to develop your area. Sometimes it's not possible. In that case, just go to the next area. So what is your action plan? First, you need to formulate a task, your objective, what is called the hypothesis. Let's say I need to find a nickel lateral deposit for whatever reason. Then you determine what type of information you will need. For example, it is known that for nickel laterites, the best technique is just direct mapping. Also, geochemical sampling will work. Geophysics, uh, no, there, there is not a good signal. Uh, geophysics, sometimes they are a little bit more magnetic. Well, you can use magnetic to define the presence of ultramafic rocks in general, but the actual target of the laterite is not responsive to geophysics. And then when you have determined the type of information you need, you need to explore what are the sources that you have at hand. And you will be surprised of how much information is available to you for free or at a very low cost. Many countries, they will have the geological funds. For example, one of the best places I have worked in my life in Armenia, they have a one of the best geological funds I have ever seen. 50, 60 years of information from the Russian geologists that work in the area, absolutely for free, just to read and get the information right there. In other cases, there is a small fee to pay. Uh, you have geological surveys like Mexico, like England, like uh, in general in Europe, Canada, uh, the United States to in some states that they provide 
an incredible amount of free or low cost information like the US yes the, there is plenty of information you can get for free then you have places like CEDAR where all the companies are filing their technical reports so <laughs> again and a, a huge amount of information for free and in general the internet so once you get your data your job is to try to prove that your hypothesis in, is incorrect and remember this is the way science works and we are scientists in science we don't try to prove that we are right we are trying to prove that we are wrong and if we are not capable of proving that we are wrong, then we assume that the hypothesis is good. But if we can prove that the hypothesis is incorrect, then we generate a new hypothesis and continue the process of trying to prove it wrong. So this is the end of the conversation. I hope these ideas will help you get a new vision on how to get this data and where can you find your next deposit which could be right there where you are working good luck in your search and thank you very much for your attention you can contact me on whatsapp on 1416-726-7691 by email on valsvg at gmail.com and I also have a youtube channel called geology and there are plenty of videos there that are part of the series of Golden Droplets. Once again, thank you very much and until next time. I think these videos are brilliant and I'm sure you will like them too. Please like, comment and subscribe and don't forget to click the notification bell.